And there came a time known as the third millennium, a time when the people of the earth were ravaged by disease, pestilence, and poisons, a time when the horsemen of the apocalypse ran the multinational corporations, a time when America's citizens were waking up to a future of no money and no jobs, a time when a special man came forward a man that your American taskmasters did not want you to see or hear. A man whom they took prisoner and hid away. A man whose name is Yahweh, Ben Yahweh. For telling people the truth, Yahweh, Ben Yahweh, was taken prisoner by the minions of darkness. For giving people hope, Yahweh, Ben Yahweh was led away to Golgotha. This is the continuing story of the past and of the future, about good and about evil, about your life and what it will become, a story that tells why the so-called black man of America had to suffer for over 400 years. A story of what will happen to the so-called black man if he returns to the laws, statutes, judgments, and commandments of God, you hey wav hey. Olam, Olam shall, shall you hey wav hey. Wav hey. The, universe the universe of you hey wav hey. 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 Brought, Brought to you, to you by, by the nation, nation of you of hey, 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 hey. Working for you and your future. Good or evil, life or death. This is your choice in this, the year 6002, the year of judgment. Shalom and welcome to the universe of Yahweh. My name is Josiah Israel, and I am your host. For over seven years now, we have been discussing some of the things the Bible said would occur in the Day of Judgment. We warned you that the weather was going to change, and that the powerful forces of nature were going to bring terrible destruction upon America and the world, and that it was going to get worse and worse and worse and it has. We alerted you that violence in the public schools was going to increase, and it has. We showed you in the scriptures that forewarned of wickedness in high places, and we are witnessing today gross misconduct and serious crimes being committed by some of our highest elected officials. What lies ahead for America and the world is nothing less than the proliferation of deadly diseases and plagues as foretold in the Bible. But there is hope. The Bible tells us that at the end, the Messiah would be revealed. And at that time, he would save the righteous from this impending destruction. That one, the Messiah, is Yahweh ben Yahweh. So we invite you to join us in the universe of Yahweh, featuring the commandments of Yahweh and the Messiah revealed. First, the commandments of Yahweh. For 6,000 years, we have been suffering at the hands of rulers who transgress the laws of yud heh wav -Hey and teach all people throughout the earth to transgress the laws of yud heh wav -Hey. In order to have peace, love, and harmony upon the earth, we must return to keeping the commandments, judgments, laws, and statutes of yud heh wav -Hey. All of us have been taught that the commandments, judgments, laws, and statutes in the Old Testament Bible do not count today. In this series, we will show you that the commandments, judgments, laws and statutes in the Old Testament Bible do count and that if we govern our lives according to these commandments, judgments, laws and statutes of God yud heh wav -Hey, 
then we will have peace and goodwill upon the earth forever. We invite you to study along with us. However, in order to do so, you must have the following tools. A King James Version of the Bible, several dictionaries, the New Strong's Exhaustive Concordance, a set of encyclopedias, Hebrew and Greek lexicons, a thesaurus, and a synonym finder. Shalom. My name is Ben Kayu Bethel Yishraya. We are discussing the commandments of Yahweh. More specifically, we are discussing the first direct commandment that Yahweh ever gave to man. That first commandment was given to Adam, which was to dress the Garden of Eden. Let us restate briefly some of the facts we shared with you last week. We learned something very startling last week. We learned that Yahweh not only commanded Adam, his descendants, and all families of the earth who joined themselves onto Yahweh to keep the seventh day as the Sabbath of Yahweh, but he commanded that the land itself shall also keep a Sabbath unto Yahweh. Yes, Leviticus chapter 25 verse 2 says, Then shall the land keep a Sabbath unto Yahweh. We explained how the land is to keep a Sabbath unto Yahweh. We read Leviticus chapter 25 verses 3 through 5. We told you that the word sow means to plant seeds for growth. We learned that just as Yahweh commanded Adam, his descendants, and all the families of the earth to do all our work in six days, he, in like manner, commanded us to plant our fields, prune our vineyards, and pick our fruit in six years. And just as the seventh day is the Sabbath of Yahweh unto us, and absolutely no work is to be done, likewise the seventh year is a Sabbath of rest unto the land, and we are not to plant seeds for growth, prune our vineyards, and pick our fruit. We also learn that anything that grows on its own accord in the seventh year, we are commanded not to reap it, nor gather it in. For every seventh year must be a Sabbath of rest unto the land, a Sabbath for Yahweh. We stated that if man would practice and keep the laws of Yahweh, as found in the Holy Bible, to let the land rest every seven years, Yahweh would bless the land and there would be no famine upon the earth. Yahweh commanded Adam to dress the Garden of Eden. Now remember we told you that the word dress in Hebrew is abad, spelled from right to left, ayin, bait, dalit, and it means worshiper. Worshipper is equivalent to celebrant, and celebrant describes a person who celebrates. By definition, celebrate means to observe a day or commemorate an event with ceremonies. So worshipper, as it relates to dress, means that Yahweh commanded Adam to cause the whole world to obey, comply with, or conform to as law, the observance or celebration of the seventh day as the Sabbath of Yahweh, to honor the memory of Yahweh for all his work which he, Yahweh, created and made. Today, we are continuing our discussion of the fact that Yahweh commanded Adam, his descendants, and all the families of the earth who joined themselves onto Yahweh to sow our fields, prune our vineyards, and gather in our fruit in six years. But the seventh year shall be a Sabbath of rest unto the land, a Sabbath for Yahweh. During the seventh year, we are commanded not to sow our fields, nor prune our vineyards. And even more, 
that which grows of its own accord of our harvest. We are not to reap it, neither are we to gather the grapes of our vine undressed. For it is a year of rest unto the land. Question. Since we can't plant our fields, prune our vineyards, and pick our fruit, not even that which grows on its own accord, then what will we have to eat in the seventh year? The answer is found in Leviticus chapter 25, verse 21, which reads, Then I, Yahweh, will command my blessing upon you in the sixth year, and it shall bring forth fruit for three years. So what will we have to eat in the seventh year? This scripture tells us that Yahweh will command his blessing upon the land in the sixth year. So much so that the land will produce abundantly and will bring forth enough in that year to last us three long years. According to Webster's Ninth New Collegiate Dictionary, copyright 1989, on page 495, fruit by definition means a product of plant growth as grain, vegetables, or cotton. Thus, when we keep a Sabbath of rest unto the land, which is a Sabbath for Yahweh, he will bless the land to produce enough food as grain and vegetables to feed our families and a surplus of goods such as cotton to operate our businesses. Not only will Yahweh command his blessing upon the land for the sixth year, but he will also command his blessing upon the land for the seventh and eighth years, according to Leviticus chapter 25, verse 22, which reads, And ye shall sow the eighth year, and eat yet of old fruit until the ninth year, until her fruits come in, ye shall eat of the old store. After the seventh year, in which the land has kept a Sabbath unto Yahweh, and after the land has rested and been refreshed, we are to begin to sow the land again the eighth year. And even though we may have planted in the sixth year, Yahweh commanded that we eat first of the old fruit, from the sixth year until the ninth year. And then by that time, the produce from our planting in the eighth year will have yielded us an abundant harvest. This is the same basic principle that most businesses use today, which is called FIFO, first in, first out. In summary, when Yahweh commanded Adam to dress the Garden of Eden, he commanded Adam, his descendants, and all the families of the earth who joined themselves onto him to keep the seventh day as the Sabbath of Yahweh. In addition, Yahweh also commanded that we let the land keep a Sabbath unto him as well. Just as the land is to rest in the seventh year as a Sabbath unto Yahweh, in like manner, we are commanded to keep the seventh day as the Sabbath of Yahweh, a day set aside for us to rest and refresh our minds in the knowledge of Yahweh and to give exclusive honor to the memory of Yahweh for all his work, his creation, which he, Yahweh, created and made. Next week, we will begin to examine the second commandment that Yahweh gave to Adam, which was to keep the Garden of Eden. I bear witness to you today that the Messiah, Yahweh ben Yahweh, is here. I bear witness to you today that the Mahdi is here. I bear witness to you today that Shiloh is here. I bear witness to you today that the great light is here. I bear witness to you today 
that the Grand Master of the Celestial Lodge, Architect of the Universe, is here. I bear witness to you today that the Enlightened One is here. I bear witness to you today that the one all religions have been speaking of for almost 6,000 years is here. Thank you for listening and join us next week as we continue our discussion of the commandments of Yahweh. Shalom. Welcome to Exodus. Release our God to us. It was prophesied that when the Son of Man appears, there will be wars and rumors of wars, pestilence and disease, a time of great and terrible natural disasters. This is Judgment Day, and yud heh wav -He is plaguing and judging this world. His judgment of America is more severe because this proud country is still persecuting his son, Yudhe Wavhe Beit Nun Sophie Yudhe Wavhe, in prison for crimes he did not commit and refused to let him go. Yudhe Wavhe dramatically displays his plagues as floods and fires, earthquakes and tornadoes, snow and blizzards. Heavy rains, flash floods, and fierce, uncontrollable fires are taking a severe toll on the United States. The media can no longer attribute these fires to arsonists. They are finally admitting that nature is starting these fires, which is another euphemism for God, yud heh wav -He. Lightning has sparked 7,824 wildfires in the western United States scorching more than five million acres of brush and forest in America. That is more than 6,700 square miles of land. That means fires have consumed the equivalent of two states. Firefighters train National Guard and Army crews to battle blazes in Arizona, California, Colorado, Florida, Idaho, Montana, Nevada, New Mexico, Oregon, Texas, Utah, and Wyoming. These fires serve as evidence that Yudhe Wavhe is not pleased with the current state of affairs. Let us read Jeremiah chapter 50, verses 31 and 32. Behold, I am against thee, O thou most proud, said the Lord God yud heh wav -He of hosts. For that day is come, the time that I will visit thee. And the most proud shall stumble and fall, and none shall raise him up. And I will kindle a fire in his cities, and it shall devour all round about him. To end these fires, the most proud, those who are responsible for the unjust imprisonment of yud heh wav -He, Beit nun sophit yud heh wav -He, must humble themselves and do what is right, and that is release our God to us. However, since these individuals are determined to hold yud heh wav -He, Beit nun sophit yud heh wav -He in prison, the present course of natural disasters worldwide shall continue to get worse and worse and worse. Shalom. We'll see you next week on Exodus. Release our God to us.
who is worthy? Who is worthy to open the book? Who is worthy to open the book and loose the seals thereof? And in the midst of the seven candlesticks, one likened to the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. At the end of time of evil rule, the Anointed One, the Messiah, shall appear. In 1979, Yahweh Ben Yahweh came to Miami and became the spiritual leader and founder of the nation of Yahweh. Although he took a vow of poverty, in seven years he guided the nation to amass a $250 million empire. Under his direction, the nation of Yahweh has grown to encompass disciples, followers, and supporters in over 1,300 cities within the U.S. and 16 foreign countries. Yahweh Ben Yahweh is bringing about changes in the lives of individuals and is giving the world the keys to success in life politically, economically, educationally, socially, and spiritually. Yahweh Ben Yahweh is faithful, true-hearted, and incorruptible to Yahweh. He is singing of mercy and judgment unto Yahweh. He is behaving himself wisely in a perfect way. He is walking within his house with a perfect heart. He is setting no wicked thing before his eyes. Yahweh ben Yahweh hates the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to him. As a matter of fact, a forward heart has departed from him. Yahweh ben Yahweh does not know a wicked person. Who so privately slanders his neighbor, him will Yahweh ben Yahweh cut off. Him that has a high look and a proud heart will not he suffer. The eyes of Yahweh ben Yahweh is upon the faithful of the land that they may dwell with him. He that walks in a perfect way shall serve Yahweh ben Yahweh. He that works deceit shall not dwell within his house. He that tells lies shall not tarry in his sight. Yahweh ben Yahweh will early destroy all the wicked of the land that he may cut off all wicked doers from Jerusalem, the city of Yahweh. Psalms chapter 101, verses 1 through 8. Yahweh ben Yahweh is the son of Yahweh. He is providing for law and justice in the land and is securing for his people the blessings of Yahweh. He is defeating all enemies and will rule forever over the whole world. Psalms 72, verses 8 through 11. These royal psalms are messianic eschatological. Thus, we are revealing the eschatological king, the ideal king, the Messiah revealed, and is interpreted in the New Testament as thoroughly messianic. Psalms chapter 2 verse 1, Acts chapter 4 verse 25, Acts chapter 13 verse 33, Hebrews chapter 1 verse 5, Hebrews chapter 5 verse 5. Remember that this is the morning of the third day and I shall rise again. I am the resurrection. If 
All of prophecy tells you that I shall rise again. It's all about that. Luke chapter 2, verse 34. No doubt about it. Again, I love you forever. Bless you forever. I remind you once again, my associates are children of the light. <laughs> that just brings uh, laughter to my heart, to my soul, to realize that at last, I have those of you that love peace. And I only want to be in the presence of those of you that love peace. I love you forever. Shalom Aleichem. We are revealing the eschatological king, the ideal king, the Messiah, Yahweh ben Yahweh. Yahweh ben Yahweh is faithful, two-hearted, and incorruptible to Yahweh. Therefore, Yahweh ben Yahweh is qualified to judge Israel and all nations. He has a perfect heart and does not know a wicked person. In like manner, we must depart from wickedness and cleave to the principles of Yahweh ben Yahweh and delight ourselves in the laws of Yahweh. Therein shall we find the blessings of Yahweh, which is perfect peace forever. Thank you for joining us in the universe of Yahweh. And now we'd like to invite all of you to pray with us as we turn to the east with outstretched hands and say a prayer to our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, the Lord's Prayer in Hebrew. Come, let us pray. Tefillah, Ave Nu Shabbat Shemayim, Yikar Deshemeyaka, Tavo Malkuteaka, Yase Razonka, Kivash Shemayim Kain Baaretz, Et Lekum Kukainu, Kain La Nu Hayom, Uslak La Nu. Ah Kati Anu, Kimosha Soul King, Gamanaknu, La Koteum La Nu, Vea Tefi Anu, Lade Nisayom, Kim Kal Senu, Min Hara, Kilaka, Hamumlaha, Veha Givera, Veha Tiferet, Leolame, Olamin Sila. We thank thee, O Yahweh, O living and eternal King, who has so mercifully restored our souls within us. Sila. Praise Yahweh, and always remember that the Father, Yahweh, and His Son, Yahweh bin Yahweh, love you, and your host loves you too. Shalom Aleichem. To order the companion book to the series, The Messiah Revealed, call 1-800-967-PEACE. That's 1-800-967-7337. And when you call, Ask about the special discount on Yahweh Ben Yahweh, the Lamb of Yahweh. Videos of this program are available. When ordering, please refer to the program number on the screen. You can now access the divine mind of Yahweh Ben Yahweh on the internet at the address on the screen.